Many of our favorite artists started out as either child stars or in music groups where they were the standout member and left to break out as a solo superstar. But there are other singers who weren't necessarily the star in their group or the group just failed to make waves as a whole. Here are some singers you didn't know used to be in groups before blowing up. This video is sponsored by Scentbird, your go-to monthly subscription for designer fragrances. It can be very stressful walking through the perfume and cologne section of a department store trying to decide which bottle you want to buy. With Scentbird, you'll get to try a few different options ranging from designer to indie brands without the pressure of having to actually buy the perfume or cologne. I've since purchased many perfumes because of Scentbird, but honestly, with inflation and prices rising, Nobody wants to be paying for expensive perfume bottles that we're probably gonna get tired of wearing at some point. Each Scentbird bottle lasts about a few months and comes in spill-proof lock bottles. This month, they sent me the two floral scents, Irresistible by Furla and Flor Narcotique by Ex Nihilo. The highlighted notes for Furla are Suppresso, Freesia, Lily, Two Bros, and White Camellia, while Ex Nihilo includes Bergamot, Lychee, Peony, Transparent Wood, and Musk. And lastly, my favorite this month, this warm, sensual, fruity perfume called Low Revie by Sicily. Start your Scentbird subscription by going to their website or simply following the link in my description box and filling out their questionnaire about your fragrance preferences. Then use my code FEMININITYTV2 to get 55% off your first month at Scentbird, bringing your total to around $7. Everything will be linked in the description box below. Thank you Scentbird for sponsoring this video. Both Carrie Hilson and Sierra attempted the girl group thing before becoming the artists they are today, and they both have similar stories. The group falling outs happened so quickly for both artists that there aren't many pictures available to use for these stories. Sierra formed a girl group named Hearsay in her mid-teens with two of her friends, and the girls started recording demos. But they would start experiencing their own set of differences, so they broke up before they even had a chance to release their music. 14-year-old Carrie Hilson also got her start in music as part of a girl group named Design that landed a record deal three years later. But they were dropped before being able to even release music. She then joined another girl group named Pretty Tony, put together by producer Anthony Dent, whose songwriting credits range from Destiny's Child to Faith Evans to Diddy. But Pretty Tony turned into another failed group for Carrie Hilson. Neo before he was penning hits for Beyonce and Rihanna, singer-songwriter Schaefer Smith, better known as Neo, started out in a male R&B group named Envy. The group was formed with three of his friends while he was attending high school in the mid-90s. In 1998, Envy traveled all the way to Harlem to compete on Showtime at the Apollo, but things did not go as planned. The quartet's cover of Players in the Hood by Donnell Jones was off-key and they got viciously booed by the audience. NV, how you doing? I'm just fine. What's your name, brother? DC. Mr. Quick. Snow. Go go. Solomon Red. Yeah, all right. Been at the mall shopping. That's nice. Got your little outfits matching. Where your brothers from? Las Vegas, Nevada. Rich, what y'all gonna do for us tonight? Gonna sing Players in the Hood for all y'all players out there. Players in the Hood.
Thank you, Apollo. Thank you, Apollo. Neo recalled the incident in a 2012 episode of VH1's Behind the Music, saying, The boos were the loudest thing, and I remember this guy in particular as loud as hell. I remember we went backstage and looked at each other, and everybody just starts crying all at the same time. We knew that was gonna be our shot, and we blew it. Envy graduated from their high school in Las Vegas and moved to Los Angeles in pursuit of a record deal. They appeared on MTV's talent series, The Cut, hosted by TLC member Lisa Left Eye Lopez, where the prizes were a record deal and a music video funded by the network. But that also didn't go as planned. Their next move was to sing outside the Capitol Records building to capture the attention of executives, hoping they'd offer them a recording contract. But the executives threatened to call the police instead. Neo said, Our plan was, move to California, find the Capitol Records building, park the van in front of the Capitol Records building, stand on top of the van, sing our hearts out until they come down and give us a record deal. We sang our hearts out until security came out and told us to move our van before they call the cops. The group broke up in 1999, but Neo stayed in LA and found work as a songwriter. He penned several songs for a boy group called Youngstown and spent years writing hits for other mainstream artists. He made his solo debut in 2006 with his album In My Own Words, and it was only up from there. Seven Streeter a lot of people were introduced to singer Seven Streeter as a protege of Chris Brown. But a decade before that, she was jump-studying her music career as a member of a girl group. In fact, she was part of two R&B girl groups. At the age of 14, Seven joined the group TG4, short for Tom Girls 4, formed by Chris Stokes. She competed on Showtime at the Apollo when she was 10 years old and later opened for B2K and Immature at a concert in her state of Florida in early 2001. And she was made the first member of the quartet. The group was created to be the female version of Chris's B2K group and match their success. TG4 released their debut single in 2002, inappropriately titled Virginity, which peaked at number 88 on Billboard's Hot R&B Hip Hop Singles and Tracks chart for six weeks number five on Billboard's Hot Singles sales chart, and number three on Billboard's R&B sales singles chart. However, their second single, Two Minutes, completely flopped. They even appeared in B2K's music video for their song, Why I Love You, and Immature's music video for their song, Ain't No Need. They joined the Scream Tour lineup in 2003, but this wasn't enough to generate any success. One member dropped out of the group, and the girls tried to continue as a trio, but ultimately decided to disband once their debut album was shelved. Seven was discovered again in 2007 by producer Rich Harrison on MySpace. She joined his girl group Rich Girl that year and signed a deal with Jive Records and his Rich Craft label. They all relocated to Atlanta to start the artist development process. They released their official debut single, He Ain't with me now though, along with their first EP in 2009. In the same year, Rich Girl toured with Beyonce as the opening act on her I Am tour during the North American leg and continued to drop songs that charted on the R&B charts. Their mixtape, Fall in Love with the Rich Girl, was released in early 2011, but unfortunately for the girls, Jive Records was shut down, leaving their future as a group in limbo. This, coupled with their lack of success, led to Rich Girl disbanding. A year later, Seven Streeter signed with Chris Brown's CBE imprint and became his co-writer and songwriter in general before releasing her own material. Bobby Valentino before his hit single slowed down, Bobby Valentino was a part of a short-lived male R&B quartet in the 90s. The Atlanta-based group Mista was formed by Organized Noise in the early 90s. Their debut single, Blackberry Molasses, was a radio hit and peaked at number 53 on the Hot 100. Blackberry Molasses, one of the things that never 
The song was reportedly Tupac's favorite song at the time of his death. Outlaws member Young Noble said, The song came out in mid-96. This was Pac's favorite song before he passed away. The last few months of his life, he played this song non-stop every damn day. Me and the rest of the Outlaws used to get tired of hearing it, but listening to the lyrics now, I understand why he loved it so much." End quote. Mista's second single, Lady, was also a moderate hit. But their self-titled debut album failed commercially, leading to the cancellation of their sophomore album. So the group split in 1997. Bobby enrolled at Clark Atlanta University, and in 2002, he auditioned for season one of American Idol. He sadly didn't make the cut, but a few years later, he was dominating radios with his 2005 smash hits, Slow Down and Tell Me. Tanache. A lot of people aren't aware that Tanache was a member of a girl group, The Stunners, between 2007 and 2011. The group was formed in 2007 after a group of friends consisting of the five child actresses Ali Gonino, Hailey Kiyoko, Kelsey Sanders, Marisol Esperanza, and Tanache did a studio session with singer-songwriter and producer Vitamin C. As a child, Tanache had acting roles in The Polar Express, Aquila and the Bee, and Rocket Power. And by the time 2007 came around, she was ready for a music career. Within six months into the group forming, the Stunners had signed a deal with Columbia Records and landed a production deal with Lionsgate Entertainment for a scripted television show on MTV. One of their songs even ended up on the iCarly soundtrack. My baby, he don't toss me. In March 2009, they released their debut single, Bubba Gum, and their EP followed in fall that year. By this time, Kelsey had left the group to focus on acting, and Lauren Hudson was eventually added to the lineup. They spent 2010 performing on daytime television shows and toured with Justin Bieber on his My World Tour. They signed a new deal with Universal Republic Records, and Tanache started to co-write tracks for the group. The girls got to work recording music for their debut album that was already planned and scheduled by the label. But those plans got canceled when the Stunners decided to split in 2011 to focus on their solo careers. Tanache started recording song covers on her webcam and uploading them to YouTube until her solo breakout hit in 2014, Tuan, featuring Drake. Her time in the music industry hasn't been easy, but Tanache has managed to become a successful touring and streaming artist. Usher International R&B superstar Usher has a music career that expands across four decades. A lot of people think he started his career with his debut album in 1994 because of how young he was. But Usher actually started recording music before that. He spent a lot of his childhood in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and that's where he joined a pre-teen hip-hop and R&B quartet called New Beginning at the age of 10 in 1991. The group was organized by local music promoter Daryl Wheeler, and New Beginning released their debut and only album locally in 1993. While in the mall But Usher's mother, Janetta, removed him out of the group due to ongoing issues and the negative experience. Usher would relocate with his family to Atlanta, Georgia, and caught the attention of music executive L.A. Reid when he auditioned for Star Search. He landed a deal and released his debut album at age 14. But it was his My Way album, released three years later, that made him an international R&B superstar. Once he gained popularity, New Beginnings music was re-released nationally as New Beginning featuring Usher Raymond IV. Kalani Kalani Parrish and her siblings came from a rough upbringing in Oakland, California. She was adopted and raised by her aunt, who exposed her to R&B and soul genres that would later influence her music. In her teens, she attended Berkeley High and the Oakland School of the Arts, where she starred in musicals, taught her own after-school hip-hop classes, and also sang the national anthem at the Giants games. At school, she met Dylan and Jaden Wiggins, the sons of Dwayne Wiggins of Tony Tony. Tony. In 2009, she sang for Dwayne at an open house at the school, and he gave her the singing position in his teen band he created called Pop Life. 
Members included both of his sons, who were the bassist and keyboardist, drummer Denzel Merritt, guitarist Dylan Ingram, and the band's DJ, Ali Khan Loken. Dwayne's wife, Michelle Loken Wiggins, served as Pop Live's manager, and the band would perform concerts in the San Francisco Bay Area and surrounding cities. They traveled to Seattle, Washington to audition for season six of NBC's America's Got Talent in 2011, and their acoustic cover of Travi McCoy's Billion featuring Bruno Mars, Wow the Judges. What's the name of that? Pop, Pop Life. Life. We are Pop Life. We're a young band from Oakland, California. This all started around middle school. We all met at an art school and we all became really tight friends. I'm the only girl in the band, so they tend to play practical jokes on me. I want to be a billionaire, so freaking bad. Buy all of the things I never had. You are just a little star, great personality, great voice. Thank you. They competed on the show for weeks to win the $1 billion grand prize, performing song covers, and made it to the final four. Sadly, Pop Life didn't win, and the show's judge, Pierce Morgan, told Kalani that she'd be better off as a solo artist without the band. The reality of this act is it's you. You are a very good singer. I mean, you hit some beautiful notes early on. You hit the big notes later. I think you've got real talent, but I don't think you need the group. We thought we'd show our talent by giving an acoustic setting, but when we get into an electric set, you, you won't say what you just said. Pop Life returned home and tried to continue to tour as a band. But in 2012, Kalani left the band due to ongoing disputes with management. She started uploading song covers on YouTube until the show's presenter Nick Cannon reached out to her to help her with her music career. And Kalani eventually landed a record deal. Since then, she's released three mixtapes and three studio albums, two of which charted on Billboard. Today, Kalani is one of the most prominent R&B voices of this generation. Luke James Most of us were introduced to Luke James as Beyonce's opening act of the European leg of her Mrs. Carter's World Tour in 2013, or as Johnny Gill in BET's 2017 miniseries, The New Edition Story. But years before those gigs, the New Orleans native was a part of an R&B trio. While enrolled at St. Augustine High School, he and two other classmates formed a musical trio named Upscale. One day, they decided to sing outside of a Michael Bolton and Tyrese concert, and they caught the attention of music manager, director, and choreographer Frank Gatson. He was Tyrese's manager at the time and had worked with many talent, including J-Lo, Michael Jackson, Usher, TLC, and Beyonce. The trio even appeared in Destiny's Child Soldier music video in 2005. But one member dropped out following their graduation, so Luke and the other member, Q, began performing as a duo. Through Frank, they were able to perform as the opening act for one of Tyrese's concerts. They got signed to Clive Davis's J Records and released their single, My Turn. But they decided to part ways due to the lack of success they received as a duo. Luckily for Luke, Frank became his longtime manager and he partnered with producer Danja to pen songs for other artists, including Britney Spears, Justin Bieber, and Chris Brown. He later started releasing his own music and getting into acting. That's all I have for today. Thanks again to Scentbird for sponsoring today's video. Don't forget to use the code FEMININITYTV2 to get 55% off your first order at Scentbird. Check the description box for more information. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, like this video, and subscribe to BFTV for more content.